Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 17. My name is Keith, and I'm here with my good buddy, Doug. Doug, you awake, man? How you doing? Yeah, good. You know, uh, I had some late day coffee. I think I'm ready to go for this podcast. That's uh, always a good thing. All the uh, brain waves are functioning correctly, hopefully. So. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, well, we have some interesting, this is an interesting one for us, uh, in that we actually had an adventure today uh, that we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to circumvent or just kind of skip over nerd news. Why? Well, because what's going to be in Nerd News' place is that Apple had their Worldwide Developer Conference, and that's yep. going to be what we're going to cover first, and then we're going to talk about the adventure that we had today. Does that sound good? Sounds great to me. All right, brother. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing uh, for uh, us to talk about the the Apple event. Let me get my all my windows kind of situated here. Yeah, while you're getting that set up, uh, we've talked about this last week. It's WWDC, the Worldwide Developer Conference. Uh, Apple, and you correct me anytime if I'm wrong, hosts this every year to kind of uh, work with developers and other people in the tech industry and those in, excited about Apple products to develop new things. It's also time for them to share what they're bringing to their iOS, uh, whether it's the vision the watch, the Mac, the iPad, Apple TV, so on, so on. The thing I liked about it, I got to watch this uh, in pieces, but I got to watch it in its entirety is, uh, you know what I think about keynotes is it's when a company gets to show off, hey, look what we're doing. This is some really cool stuff. And being uh, on the edge of getting an iPhone over Android, this really excited me. And uh, we'll get into that here in just a little bit. That's a great intro, man. So this thing was about an hour and 40 minutes wasn't that how long it was i think it was like an hour and 40 uh and there was a lot so it's very software centered if you're unaware apple has periodic keynotes throughout the year fall will be iphone usually spring will be like computer line like imac uh in their uh, mac mini line and their macbook pro line uh i believe it was in may it was all ipads which we talked about and this is all software which is all about the next version of ios that's coming out and so this thing was packed i mean there was a lot in there and we're going to go over some of the like the highlights so you don't have to watch the full one hour and 40 some odd minutes sorry if you're an android person and we're and we're boring you uh but uh, there was so much news condensed into this that will have impacts to android users i think the long run because they're always playing cat and mouse going back and forth on it. oh absolutely yeah so what, when do you when do you dive in first i i'll be honest with you when it came to the vision pro uh the vision pro 2 I kind of glossed over, didn't listen, mainly yeah. because I don't plan on getting one because I'm not not a massive but, VR person with I have one bad eye and I don't have thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, the price point is just way too high for me for just being an enthusiast, not an actual user, graphic designer, movie producer, anything like that. So that's way out of my realm. I think I it's cool. Glossed over it as well. I think it's cool, but oh, yeah. Yeah. Like <sighs> now they do have, we'll talk about it a little bit, some big partnerships coming in. I know Canon, the uh, maker of the DSLRs and the cameras, is making a special spatial lens yeah, just for the Vision there. Pro. So yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. And we've got a, a video, summary video playing as well for those of you not listening only by audio, but watching us as well. So if we reference it, we'll try to be very mindful of those just listening to audio only. Um, but they have different interfaces too. They talked about for the Vision Pro. Again, I didn't spend tons of, of time on that. Uh, for me, it was in two places. iOS 18 was, which will be fall, hopefully, yep. uh, is when it comes out. And they have app locks. Now, I have mixed feelings about the apps locks. I think the example they gave was if you're ever out to dinner and you hand somebody your phone and you're like, hey, man, check out this photo. And if somebody like starts flipping through your phone, uh, you're able to hide certain photos that you don't want people to see. But app lock, Definitely. you can also hide apps that you don't want people to see. Um, I think it's a, it's a so-so feature. That's fine. Um, you know, I don't ever have anything to hide. So I don't know. It didn't really impact me. I don't know if you have that issue or not. I don't at all. You know, I all my apps are open, but I, I see that would be great if you're, uh, say, you know, me from law enforcement. If I have to give my phone to a law enforcement officer, I want him to just look at my insurance or whatever I'm showing him. I don't want him snooping around on there, obviously. And that's pretty crazy coming from a former law enforcement officer. The, yeah. the thing I saw, though, and they're making a lot of memes about it, 
is uh, dating apps and stuff, hiding them from your Cheating. girlfriend, your specific partner, yep. not specific partner. I, don't, I know what you mean. Your partner. Yeah. yeah. So it seems like that's what they're doing. The other thing about it is I thought as a parent, if you do not have, uh, if you have a teenager and you do not have controls on the phones already, which oh, honestly, yes. most people don't, which is foolish. I, Trust me, mistakes were made. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm saying this from a place of being informed, not only as a parent of teenagers, uh, but also just, um, you know, in IT. It's, it's crazy, and I think it's, it's enabling good. kids to hide things too, and that's not good. So I get the spirit in which where they're coming from. I appreciate the, 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 the intent, but I definitely see where it's going to be used for. Malicious purposes. Yeah, yeah, maybe not so honest purposes. So yeah. my advice, parents, just control your kids' uh, phones. Yeah, lock I mean, them down. Uh, yeah. the one thing I'll say as a cop, I've seen that time and time and time again. Snapchat, the development <sighs> of that, oh yep. my gosh, terrible for kids. Yep. Just uh, there's lots of parental controls, both on Android and iPhone, and use those big time is what I would say. Exactly. Now, they we were just talking about... Um, so they started with the, well, I'll, I'm going to click back on the video here. Yep. Apps and photos, which you have on the list here. Uh, redesigns for photos, maps, wallets. And what was the last thing there? I don't have my screen quite big enough. Uh, photos, maps, wallets, oh, and satellite-based and messaging. Yeah. Yep. So you can do uh, satellite phone calls, if I remember yeah. correctly, which is kind of cool. So it's an emergency. You have no cell signal, no Wi-Fi. It can actually do text messaging and emergency broadcasting with a satellite calling with the newest phones and with iOS 18. That's yeah. Really cool. On the video, they showed it's really cool. It's kind of the old school. Like if you had a Garmin to go hiking, I know yeah. my father had one, but it kind of shows you point towards the satellite, get a good signal. Yeah. This is going to be really good. Uh, I'm sure paired with the ultra watch too, for those hikers and those out way away from, uh, any type of cell phone service is going to be a great feature. So Exactly. I think that's cool. I think that's yeah. awesome, and I'm glad they're bringing it. Oh, I'm going to let you take this next one. Because he, I'm going to say, wait, first, before you do, he actually texted me. I'm in the middle of the day working. I could not watch the conference because I was working. I had to watch it in the evening. But I got a text from Doug in the middle of the day, and this was, he was so excited. This was his watershed yeah. moment. I'm going to let you take it from there. <laughs> I'll kind of set it up as Please do. I watched this, uh, you know, last year, I was so close to switching to an iPhone this year. I thought this is all the development for all the iOSs or the OSs, I should say. Yep. Uh, so the one thing they got to after satellite based messaging was scheduling text messages. And this excited me so much because Android has had scheduled oh, text messages for so long. And I mean, it seems just like such a trivial thing to add, but I thought, okay, Apple, you got me now because that's the one thing I dreaded coming to iOS is not having scheduled text messages. And yeah. I'll kind of wrap this up as the wife says, hey, schedule me text messages for shopping or for I need to go by and check on plants at somebody's house or something. So iOS adding this, this kind of seals the deal of I definitely want to try an iPhone this year. Yes. It's like... Yeah. The day before, if you have somebody's birthday in your Apple contacts, it will warn you the day before. Being able to now send a text message the day before and schedule it for tomorrow for somebody's happy birthday. It's I mean, big. that just it's seems huge. so simple, right? Yeah. And it's not that I don't think we care. It's we live, all of us live such busy lives. Exactly. And for it to, we thought the idea, but we're getting a little assistance to send a message a little bit later. It's great. Now, we didn't have it fully on him. I'm going to back this up a bit. Let's talk about text messaging. So not only are we talking about scheduling them, like D that was Doug's watershed moment, which I, I agree with him. It's awesome. You reminded me today they're adding uh, the ability to change fonts. What was it? Cross things out, underline, bold. Yeah, in uh, your text messages. So if you're trying to emphasize a point, I think mm -hmm. they're going to let you do that, which is really cool. Uh, it's right on the video now for those yep. watching the video format. So, you know, it says, took the fire department over two minutes to, or, and it crossed out two minutes and put two hours. Mm -hmm. So I think you can go Text back. Text effects. That's the other yeah, one. See that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can go back and edit your message now. Text yep. effects. This video is going a little quick. You yeah. can make things explode. You can make them nod. Bounce. It's going to make texting on the iPhone really fun. It is. It's really, it's some cool, like quality of life features is what I would call it. And at the very tail end of that, you have it on list here, Doug. We've always talked about this before. RCS support. What does that essentially mean? 
So Rich Communication Service is RCS, if I have my acronyms right. That yep. is what is the standard of Android. Um, iPhone, now I'll poke, a fun, uh, I'll poke at them a little bit. I'm getting my words mixed up. Uh, the European Union, I believe, said they need to go to RCS. They're finally going to RCS, just like uh, USB-C. But this is going to help with that uh, blue bubble, green bubble, if I have my colors right. Yeah, but and here's the thing that I don't like, Doug. I'm not going to be able to make fun of you anymore if you switch over to the Apple camp, uh, you know. But but if they, I guess if they fix this and you kept your Android, I wouldn't have your green bubble anymore. Yeah, we still have this uh, firefighter <laughs> guy we can uh, pick on. Oh, okay. I know that guy. Shots fired. <laughs> All right, so that means even if you switch camps over to iPhone, when we're in yep. a group chat with our firefighter friend, cough cough Matt, uh, we will uh, we'll have somebody to make fun of. Although, I, I from what I understand, I, I think RCS mes- messaging it might solve that green bubble blue bubble thing. I think that was part of the hubbub. We'll see. I guess we'll do some I- testing with it. I think so. There's still, so now, um, kind of talking about the history, I won't spend too long. There's been some updates definitely between the iOS messaging and RCS messaging. When you all react to one of my comments, whether it's a like or a laugh or something, I used to have Keith laughed at uh, this comment. It would repeat it. Yeah. And I have no idea what comment you laughed at. Mm -hmm. So Android is slowly, or Apple is slowly letting Android see the reactions. I still can't react to just photos. I can only react to text. So yeah. this may solve that too for the Android users. It may. So I, I think it's a welcome change. So yeah. it, it's all good. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think. There was one, they did mention paying. Like if you bump the phones together, you can now transfer money with Apple Pay. That's a new mm-hmm. thing. Yep. I only saw that on the video. It wasn't on our list. <laughs> but that was one that we yeah, had on uh, there. iOS 18 is going to be one of their biggest overhauls. It is. And we'll talk about it a lot. There's a lot of AI coming, but we have that coming up here. In just we'll talk a about that here in a bit. Um, and then they did, you know, get into right now they're talking about the new features they're adding to that. I'll only mention now, this briefly to the AirPods. And I think the biggest thing on this, it wasn't a lot, except you can shake your head yes or no to answer a yeah. call. That's kind of the big thing with those. That was really cool. They show a guy in an elevator, for those who haven't watched, and uh, he's getting a call or a text message, and he's shaking his head no, like, I don't want to accept the call. That's a really cool idea. It is. And I, I have AirPods. I love them. So I'm glad they're, they're, they're still expanding on that. So that's mm-hmm. really cool. Um, and we can talk about uh, Watch OS, which is right right here at the beginning. i got to skip through the ad part here that they had. Uh, so... Watch OS is kind of getting some extra stuff. The They had new watch faces, which is a big deal. They haven't done that in a while. Uh, and then I think, what's the other part? New health tracking? Was that? Oh, yeah. They have extra stuff on there. Yeah, I believe they've talked about uh, some stuff with uh, heart health. Yes. Uh, they're going to be tracking some of that. Uh, EKG, I know they added that uh, update or two ago. They did. Uh, uh, right now, they're showing on the video how hard you work out. It kind of gives you a scale from uh, 1 to 10. Yep. Sleeping. I think the sleep monitoring has mm-hmm. been improved because they already were tracking that. Uh, so they're really trying to like double up. I didn't feel like a lot of the watch update was too heavy, to be honest with you. Um, no, I think they kind of had some little improvements. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll jump on into Mac OS. They are announce Sequoia. They're continuing the national parks, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and so, what was what was this? They're talking about it right now. What was your favorite part of this one? Uh, the screen mirroring, yes. uh, mirroring. If I say that right, was really you did. cool. It was uh, awesome. Perfectly mirroring your iPad or your iPhone to your uh, Mac. So it seems yep. really good. So if you're sitting, what that means is if your phone is in another room and you're on your Mac. You can bring up a digital version of your phone and actually control your phone from the other room. I think there are going to be some really cool pranks you can play on people. That's why. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> now, the funny thing about this is I just got my June feature drop. That's what uh, Google likes to call Pixel feature drops. Mm-hmm. And it has uh, phone screen mirroring. mirroring. They're, they're always neck and neck. So it's like, hmm. <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, I've used it. I don't like it a lot because... Uh, it's not very intuitive yet. It just kind of mirrors on the screen, and it, yeah. there's no th- way to resize it or anything. So they've got to do some work on the Android side for exactly. that. Exactly. And I don't know how much I would actually use that feature, to be honest with you. But 
Yeah. Well, well no, and that's the thing that annoyed me too with the Android so far is you can't turn your phone screen off. Otherwise, it doesn't work on the mirrored screen unless and I'm doing something wrong. And they did mention that. They were like, what happens on your phone uh, when you're mirrored with Apple? Yeah. It's actually on the lock screen and, and you can turn the screen off. So that's kind of cool. See, and Android doesn't have that yet. Yeah. All right. Next on the list is iPad OS, right? Oh, and l- let me get you started. <laughs> We got the calculator, baby. I know. I sent Doug okay. this. I'll this, calm down. I sent Doug this meme where it said, uh, "We've got some amazing announcement at Apple's," and it's uh, Anakin, and then Padme in the next frame it says, "It's AI, right?" And then he flips down and just staring at her, and she's like, "AI, right?" And then finally he goes, "We're putting a calculator on the iPad." <laughs> so there's a long history of there Steve is. Jobs and a calculator app on the iPad. I don't know the exact thing, but they, 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 did just, never... they just didn't. They didn't include it. They had it on yeah. the iPhone, but they didn't put it on the iPad. Now there are apps. You know, of course, the App Store stepped up, uh, but <laughs> this is just kind of funny. It's how advanced they are. Because later in the presentation, they talk about these crazy advanced AI things, but <laughs> the iPad getting the calculator was kind of crazy. But it did have some cool math stuff that they just show with the pencil, which are it's on the screen now. Yeah, I mean, that is a pretty big deal. It's a calculator plus the AI, which we'll get into in a minute. So uh, other than that, there was a couple little changes for the iPad. Nothing too crazy. Nothing, nothing really uh, mentioned worthy, I don't think. Uh, yeah. they're, right now, they're showing notes on the iPad. It's, it's um, going to get all of those messaging things. All the stuff yeah. that we just mentioned with iOS 18, iPad OS is going to get all those yeah. those things. Yeah. things. So that's, that's kind of good. So... Uh, Moving to Apple TV, which there are a ton of great shows. They didn't really talk a lot about their Apple TV box. They just talked about all the really good shows that are continuing on it. And I have to agree. I love, you know, Silo, Severance. Um, oh, Severance is coming back. That's right. I love yeah. that show. Well, they do have Insight. Now, Insight is oh, basically yes. okay. X-Ray, which is what Amazon has. That's if you pause it, it shows you the actor the actress, what else have they been in? And that, that's been around for a while. Again, in a lot of these things, it's playing catch up with other competitors or copying them. It's just cat and mouse game, you know? So yeah, that was the biggest thing. Mention that because it's really cool on Amazon to, it'll give you fun facts and trivia while you're watching the movie. Exactly. But Apple TV didn't have too much, but they're always using kind of light on that. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty stable. So I don't, I don't know. They haven't had a lot of, uh, heavy stuff in that in that space so all right uh the big one you the ready big one yeah uh, it wouldn't be uh, the wired nerdy podcast without a little ai and apple was big on ai this year what they're calling apple intelligence uh, everything from you know watch os ipad os ios vision all of it got a little bit of apple intelligence built into it for the upcoming os updates and what's crazy about this, so Apple Intelligence is their own uh, large learning language model. It has integrations, this is big, into ChatGPT. So that means big. if you have a script, uh, prescript, or sorry, a subscription for ChatGPT, you're going to be able to use it now integration with uh, Siri and with the OS layer. Um, Doug and I have said for a long time that this is coming. Like the minute oh, yeah. they start integrating this yep. on the phones, and I think you said it today when we were talking, them having the partnership uh, with a phone company is this is a big deal, you know. It is, and it looks like their latest 4.0 model is the one going on iOS 18. So huge it news! Is. And the things you can do, it's pretty interesting. You can make photos for anything. So if Doug and I are talking, and if you know, I can bring up the intelligence piece, and if I want to send him an image of a camel drinking a soda i just type that in yeah and it can draw it and i pick the style and it sends it to him in the text message (laughs) it is crazy you know they've talked about uh, making your own emojis yep um they've talked about uh, for siri uh, text options so if you're in a crowd and you don't want people to know what you're asking siri you can text siri now which i thought was really cool yeah because there are some things i search i'd like if i'm in an elevator i don't want everybody to know that or send in a command so yeah. that was pretty cool too. And they also have, you can ask it questions because it knows the data locally on the phone. So if you say, mm-hmm. show me a photo of Doug uh, in Paris, 
boom, it knows who Doug is. It, it, and I know there's going to be a lot of privacy concerns in that, mm-hmm. but being Apple, they're very strict on their security elements. So I don't think we have to worry about that. Um, you know, yeah, that they talked about that a lot in the keynote. They said that uh, we're working with OpenAI, the uh, makers or owners of ChatGPT. There's a lot of security things. And I think Apple has always held their devices to a higher security standard, especially with their closed uh, network of OS. You know, Android is so fragmented with Samsung and Google and all the others. I think uh, Apple does a lot better job of keeping all their stuff together. They really do. It's, sometimes it annoys people. They're actually because they have such high castle walls on it. and uh, But it's not necessarily always a bad thing, especially when you're dealing with a new technology like this. Mm-hmm. I, I think the other thing is that they're going to integrate this into, it's just going to be baked into the OS, is going to be the writing piece. So you're going to get help writing emails, text messages. It does predictive text. It already kind of does that, but it's going to be even better. And then Siri. Oh, my gosh. That girl needs help. <laughs> she, it drives me nuts. I've said this for a long time, but being able to have a natural conversation with Siri, yeah, I think it's it's much needed. I mean, just today, Doug said something, and I, I'm driving, so I'm using driver assist because, you know, I want to be safe. And I say, mm-hmm. you know, I say, hey, Siri. I don't want to say it too loud because my phone will activate. <laughs> Actually, there, she just activated. <laughs> and so uh, I asked it a question because we were heading, we were driving somewhere. And it popped up with, it didn't like talk to me. It gave me like the text. And I was like, see what I mean? This is what I mean. Like it it knows I'm driving because it was in driving mode, but it expected me to read my phone for the result instead of reading it back to me. So Yeah. Having uh, chat GPT behind Siri, I can only imagine it's going to exponentially be way better. And if it's a language learning, it's going to keep learning from what you do and everything. I didn't even think about that aspect. Uh, Yeah. I mean, open AI being able to have access to that integration and be able to train their data set with all, all these phone interactions with I- iOS. Jeez Louise. Yeah. It's uh, only going to get better. Uh, the other stuff they talked about is, you know, helping out with your notifications, mm-hmm. emails, uh, some of your traffic data and, uh, other issues on the phone. That would be great. Cause I know I've talked about, and you talked about as well, sorting out uh, Excel spreadsheets, word documents, I've used it to uh, help me with resumes and yeah. uh, reports I need for work. Yep. It does a really good job. So I can only imagine on based on device based. Uh, it's not cloud based. Is what I'm trying to say. So faster responses for it should be faster. And the cool yeah. thing is, it, it knows context, and so it can prioritize. So if it knows that so and so is your 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 spouse, it will. It, it will make sure that their message is at the top because it may be immediate or it knows what they're saying. If they're asking you a question about, hey, Doug, do you want to get dinner with this couple at six? It will put it and prioritize that message because it, it understands that it's a time box message and they need an answer right away. Yeah. So it can even do things like that where, I, I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see. This will be the first like full-blown application of AI on a smartphone. Gemini doesn't count for Android yet because I don't think it's as integrated yet. You, uh, you would know. I don't know. Yeah, I have uh, Gemini, the app, and the uh, chat GPT app on my phone. I've kind of fact-checked as much as I can stuff on both apps, and I found that chat GPT uh, routinely gives me better answers. That Some of the answers on Gemini, it's great, but they're kind of wacky sometimes. Yeah, no, I could definitely see that. So, yeah, man, overall impressions of this, they had tons of announcements, way more than I thought they would. I thought they were only going to have iOS 18. That's about it. It was close to two hours long, I think. It was. They they came out swinging at the end of it with all the AI stuff. Yeah, announcement after announcement after announcement. Yeah, you could barely keep up with it. So this is going to be a pretty big deal on how all this is. So I would say as of right now, this seals my seals my fate as far as getting an iphone so many features that i like on android are now on ios it's that, and as little as it seems that uh, scheduling text messages was a big one for me no i get it you want to have feature parity with what you're used to so that that makes total total sense so all right man i i think that was that was a really good conference um yeah and uh i'm i'm looking forward to ios 18 and we'll talk more about it i'm sure as we play with it on the episodes and we get into showing you what it can and can't do and uh, that sort of thing. So yeah. once it gets closer to release. So. All right. So we'll move we went, on to, yeah, our, I'm going to let you set uh, it up. Well, I got to swap, uh, you know, 
the screen share here. I'm going to let oh, you set you it go up. Ahead. So uh, Keith and I took a little adventure into the big city, as we say, uh, the St. Louis area there, to a place called Micro Center. Now, for those that don't know, Micro Center is a kind of a niche, if I might say, electronics store, but it's got some really good stuff. You know, Best Buy is kind of the Walmart of electronics. Uh, sorry, Best Buy. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> Micro Center is uh, got really, really good stuff, uh, pretty good prices, but there's not a lot of them around the country. So getting to go to one of them is really good. Uh, right now, we're looking at uh, videos that Keith took. Uh, their displays are great. You know, they have all these glass lighted security displays. Uh, yeah, there's so, there's so much car. in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, like, it, it, it's kind of hard to see in the video. There's just so much there. And these are very quick videos. There's not a lot of them. Just because there's so much stuff crammed into these stores that it's very difficult. Oh, I forgot to mention, we went to dinner, and this is what we had for dinner. I've, yeah, I've never <laughs> been to a Red Robin. Shout out to Red Robin. Really Shout good you. customer service. So. And it was, what was it? Uh, the bottom, It was bottomless uh, Bottomless uh, fries, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that right. Uh, PC so cases. So back to my Chris yeah. Center, we're looking yeah. at uh, <laughs> towers. They have every kind of desktop tower you want, you know, the glass see-through ones, uh, the big boxes, little boxes. Fish uh, tank. Integrated cooling. Wood it trim just goes on and on. They oh, had the wood, wood trim. Tr- it looked great. Yeah, <laughs> they had tons of them. And the idea behind Micro Center is that you could actually, if you wanted to, you could walk around, grab your PC case, grab your motherboard, grab your processor, grab your video card, grab your power yep. supply, and you could actually go build it off to the side with with some general guidance, or you can hand it to them and tell them to put it together. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the difference between it and Best Buy is you can build a truly custom PC with it. It was really good. Uh, we. Uh, Went around the store. You know, I went to Micro Center before with the wife. She's not really into electronics at all. Nothing against her. But I didn't really have time to kind of go aisle by aisle by aisle. So it was really good to go with you to explore, say, is there anything that I need for a future project? And I think you had some stuff for a project you were working on, if you want to tell us about that. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to get my share up here. So there, I went with some key goals because I told Duck on the way in there, I've been wanting to go, been wanting to go with him because I knew he wanted to spend some time there. And so, uh, you know, I I had it pretty much figured out what I what I wanted to get. I just didn't know how I wanted to go about it. And um, I ended up just leaning into what I thought I would. So my need is I wanted to build a server, a file server at home, and. I was on the fence between if I wanted just to get a, a, a you know a Windows based PC, uh, or if I wanted to be able to just use a Raspberry Pi. I landed on the Raspberry Pi, and the reason why is one, uh, it'll help me beef up my my Linux skills, uh, which predominantly Linux works really really well on the Pi, and I've already done a lot of research on it. Uh, so when we were there, we were going through and looking at it. So I did a Pi five uh, eight gig, and I'm going to put it in an enclosure. And I'm going to have extended drives on it. I'm going to share it out, and I'm going to make it almost kind of like a private cloud. Uh, there are uh, there are features that you can use that allow you to extend it, so you can get access to anywhere. So this is just a project I've been wanting to do for a while, personally, so I can you know store all types of things on it. Right now, I have so many hard drives that have game ROMs on it whether it's movies, just it's not really like important, like photos, because I use the real cloud for that. I use Google Cloud for that. It's, it's just kind of all yeah. spread out oh, everywhere. I got it on like five different drives and yeah. I just I want to consolidate and, and bring it down. We talked about it before. I love that ExaDOS program. What that is, oh, yeah. that is DOS video gaming. But that alone is like, I think. I think that bad boy alone is it's maybe a big file. 60 gig. Yeah. And yeah. it's a big download. You don't want to download it all the time. There's a new version of that. So I want to store that. So I ended up going with the Raspberry Pi. This will be my next project. And I will let you guys know how it goes. Oh, uh, and, yeah. And I'm going to be able just to use it just to, you know, back up my files and just have my own little home, personal, private cloud. That's That's my goal. So that was my first thing there. Uh, that I got, and I got you know this kit for it, and and it'll be a fun little project to do, and so get my hands on it. And you're supposed to be able to overclock these as well. I did get the there's a if, if you're going to overclock, they have a heat sink and a fan that can go over the processor to cool it down more. And overclocking means is that you're pushing it beyond its stock speed, so it can run a little faster, which is unique for these Pi this version that lets you do that. Uh, so I'm looking forward to playing with it, and uh, I think it's gonna be fun. 
So I'm gonna let you go next because yours is not on a screen share. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen there. Yeah. So I uh, went in with a little cash in my pocket, you know, thinking, what do I need? Look through the aisles, aisles, and then I kind of sorted, settled on a Cooler Master laptop cooling pad. And uh, for those uh, watching, uh, <coughs> He's getting I'm choked sorry. up about it. He's so excited. You know, I'm very emotional. So I got a Cooler Master uh, here Excellent. on the video. Yeah. Very nice. It's uh, currently under my laptop, uh, giving me some cool air. I've had some issues with uh, Fallout 76 and some other new games. My laptop doesn't overheat, it, it, but that fan's running pretty good, and I just want to give a little extra protection, make sure all my uh, boards and internals stay nice and cool. So well, that was my purchase today. And there's something called thermal thermal throttling that takes place on a system. What that means is uh, you have you have different things putting out heat. You've got your video card, you got your RAM, you got your hard drive, you got your processor. And the harder you're pushing it, for example, playing a video game is using all of those things. They're going to increase in heat. As things increase in heat, you hit a wall at some point where you could experience performance issues or slowdowns because it's not as efficient because that heat is preventing the system from operating in its most efficient way. So the cool thing about what he got by having direct fans on it, and if I remember right, doesn't that those fans are directed to where it pulls the heat out of what's already being blown out, right? I so, you get, so, yeah. so you can get the hot air away from it yeah. faster. That'll cause the ambient temperature inside the system to go down. He should get better performance issues. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, should perform better and not have thermal throttling. But you said you haven't noticed any performance issues, and it's not like overheating. No, I, you know, I can hear my fan running. The the lid gets a little warm, but it's okay. The cool thing about this is it has a USB pass through. I guess it's what I call it. So I plug it in, it gets powered, but then it still gives me that USB slot that's taken up to power something else or run something else. So that was a really cool feature. That's awesome. That's a really cool feature. So then you're not using up you know one more slot you know uh, usb ports are precious and limited so uh, you hate to use one up just to keep your laptop cool that's right well you had a good find there so that yeah, that was good that was a really good purchase so, so the next thing uh my pickup that i went I, i've been looking for a while and i just i'm not happy with i haven't been able to find something it's important to note that i spend tons tons of time in this office working I, I i work predominantly from home i have a standing desk thankfully uh but I, you know i spend a lot of time in this room that's what doug will tell you it's like the reason why i'm i'm a big pro console gamer is because i can game in my living room and i because i get sick of sitting in this room and yeah the if you're looking on the camera it looks like i'm in a spaceship right now but that's only because i have a green screen and it's very quiet in here but it's kind of a it's 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 an entombed it's a closet is what it is so it's nothing to look at but clothes behind behind me but i spend a lot of time in here and i knew for a very long time that i i've gone through chairs i want to try a different chair because i spend so much time and i didn't know what we find today because my big thing is every time i buy a chair i haven't been happy with it why because i haven't sat in it really very much and I wanted to give it a shot. I remember when I went to Micro Center a long time ago, they used to have the chairs out and you could, you know, sit in them, try them out. Mm -hmm. That was my goal. Doug and I get there. They have chairs. They have a lot of chairs. Yeah. They're like, dude, they had a lot. Yeah, they're quite all, a few. They're all up high, like up. You can't get it. Displayed, and we like yeah. asked multiple people and they were like, no, you can't sit in them. But we do have a 30 day return policy. Take it home, sit in it. If you don't like it, bring it back. And I'm like, okay, well. And at that point, I told Doug, I was like, man, I'm just going to get the Pi server. That was my main goal that I, I want to yeah. do. I'm not going to worry about chair because I, I don't know. I'll just have to go to like an office store. And I'd given up hope. And we kept asking. And finally, it was at the very tail end. We were about to leave. And a lady walked up. They always ask you, do you need help? And I was like, yeah. Like, do you have all these chairs in stock? I was just asking in general. And then Doug pipes up and he's like, hey, can you sit in one? <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, dude, she's not going to let us. We've asked people no. And then the what's the what's the thing she said? <laughs> she said, sure. I think my manager's got this one in his office. My mouth dropped open. I was like, really? I, you you do? And she's like, oh yeah, I'll go get it. And I looked yeah. at Doug, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't think she'd say yes. We'd been told so 
No, so many times. <laughs> so she goes back to the manager's office and brings it out. The funny thing was, the manager shows up. He's he like, did. hey, wait, is this my chair? She's like, She's yeah, like, stole uh, it. It's okay. I'm trying to sell uh, this chair. Not your chair. This chair to this guy. Yep. Yeah. And I tried it. and It was comfortable. And I was yep. like, you know, this could do. This is this is good. I, you know. And then a few minutes later, uh, a bigger another manager, manager. Yeah. Another manager walks in. Yeah. He was dressed over. fancier, too, wasn't he? He was fancier. <laughs> So the other model chair, he had the other model chair. He's like, and he was very nice. Uh, yeah. I have the other model chair. Would you like to try it? Well, it's right like, in my office. So yes. So, got it. Yeah. so then I tried that one. It, dude, that one, that sealed the deal. Because when I yeah, sat, I was like, absolutely. oh my gosh. And and so I ended up getting a chair and I'm so glad I did. I'm sitting in it now. Uh, I will show you guys a quick little. Yeah, there. it looks very nice. It's the executive. I, I like line. the really high arms. Uh, very good. I went with cloth this time. I've always had leather or pleather. Um, yeah. I have cats. Sometimes they they claw it. I wanted like, to try yeah. the softer. Yeah, they do. They like it. And what's funny, Doug, is I put this together right before the podcast, and my gray cat, which is ironic, same color. She jumped in it and she had already curled up and started to go to sleep. And I just oh, built it. I hadn't even sat it's in it. A comfy yet. chair. <laughs> I guess cat so. approved. Yeah, it is. So this is the Inland, which uh, Inland is this right, Doug? I think that's the brand that Microsoft. I think that's carries. the house brand. Yeah, it is. It, so I didn't know how it was going to be because you could go with one of the more. I, I was researching like the really expensive ones that you can get online, and I was like, ah. But I went with the, this one, and I so far I'm so happy with it. Uh, it's it, it. This is the exact one. It's gray. What really surprised me, she said, well, it comes with the lumbar pillow. I was expecting only one pillow. It came with both of these and they're magnetic. Oh, and so nice. like, like this. Uh, see, comes oh. right off. I took it off there and there's no strap. I thought it would strap around. What's funny yeah. is the instructions said uh, you'll have to adjust the strap around. There is no strap in this one. It just oh, clicks right oh. on there and you can adjust it higher or low because of the magnets. Uh, and the same goes for the one on the bottom for the lumbar support. It looks really good, yeah. It's super comfortable. But this right now, the podcast, I literally built it, and then we jumped on the podcast. So I haven't had it for like a super long time. Uh, but so far, it is extremely comfortable. And I'm excited about it because I spend so much time in a chair. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's your job to sit there and uh, do that thing, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it is. So. I am so thankful for for Doug speaking up on my behalf because no joke in my brain I'm like ah oh, Doug why are you even ask they're gonna tell us no and then the minute uh, she's like oh yeah sure and I was like what, come again <laughs> wait what hold on what and she's like yeah you you wanna yeah yeah I was like yeah you would be my hero if you do that so I'm yeah. definitely going to be filling out a survey for her yeah shout out to her big time thank you yeah it, it was great so it was it was a fun trip. Um, I was more successful than I thought when we first got there. I was like, you know, I'm not really finding much because I had it in my brain that I was going to just do like a small, you know, Celeron based windows computer. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll hit the easy button on it, but they didn't really have what I was looking for. And it was more my, like most of their small computers, they have like $500. I'm like, I don't want to spend $500 for a right. Celeron computer. I don't know. So they had the raspberry Pi. And then the chair thing, I had pretty much given up. They had this. So I think it was a, a very successful day. Yeah, very. Yeah. And um, had you got a good to walk uh, lunch that you showed. Uh, had yeah. a good trip to Micro Center. Yep. Uh, My son went good. with us, right? Yep. He, he got a Logitech GX Pro gaming mouse. Yeah. It was his birthday is coming up this month. We told him, hey, come along. You know, I don't know what you're going to want for your birthday. And he's like, you know, what? I've been really wanting a gaming mouse. And the thing about this mouse, like he let me hold it in the car. And this thing is so light. It, it weighs is... nothing. Yeah. Oh, and like the response time on it. And he he's on his computer all the time. He's about to go to college. He's going to go into video game development. And I was like, you know, that's actually the perfect gift because he's going to use that mouse tons doing online classes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. That sort of thing. So I think he had a good time as well. You know, it was the Red Robin was only five minutes from Micro Center. Uh, it yep. was great. We're very, very lucky that we have one of those, you know, around. I think Doug probably would have gotten more if he wasn't jonesing for the the iPhone. That's what I think. The uh, iPhone 16, you know, uh, we're in the middle of June, July ish, and the iPhone 16 is coming out. 
I would get the 15, but uh, I, I'm going to wait. You know, this is like Christmas. You see the uh, presents on the tree. Don't touch them. Just <laughs> wait. Be patient. So. Yeah. You did good, though. You had some pretty good restraint. I think yeah. that place would be most dangerous if you're in the market. Oh, for... yes. Yeah. Yeah. I did see some gaming laptops, though. I mean, the next time you go, you could probably put your hands on, like, in the future. Yeah. You could put your hands on them. You know, we got a guy that plays uh, Civ that might need a new laptop. Because Civilization I'll get. I'll make seven. a heck of a deal. Civ 7 coming out, which we'll cover that uh, oh. here in the future. Actually, I sent him. So we have a friend of ours. He plays Civilization. Uh, he's played it for years, and he's he's really good oh, at it. He is really good at it. And he, uh, he loves that game, and he's very good at it. And, and he hasn't upgraded his laptop in a long time, but they just made the announcement for Civilization 7. And yep. every time there's a new civilization, it pushes your, it, 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 believe it or not, for being a strategy. It's like you get, and he and I have talked about this before, you get so far along on oh, turns, yeah. your fan on your, on if it's laptop, or it's going to kick in because it's calculating all the units in the world, doing all that math. And uh, it gets, it can push your machine. So that new one, so I, I sent him the trailer and I was like, hey, buddy, you're going to need to get a new laptop. So, hey. Doug, maybe want to upgrade. Yeah, maybe you I'll make him a heck of a deal. Yeah, <laughs> look at this. We're trying to we're trying to talk him into it on the podcast. Yeah, so, but so yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's really cool. It, I had a great day today. It was fun. It turned out better than I thought it was going to. I was, I thought we were going to strike out for a while. There, I was like, eh, you know, I'm not really feeling it. It's not a lot that I wanted, but but really good day. Yeah, <laughs> it it worked out really really well. And I was also shocked. You mentioned this. I've not gotten into 3D printing. My brother extensively. You yes. pointed it out. They had tons oh, of 3D printing they have tons. stuff. You know, a they had a lot a aisle devoted just to different color filaments. Now I know nothing about 3D printing. I'm wondering not just colors, but different size filaments, like millimeter sizes. The they had that. tons of completed projects. Now, when I've been to Micro Cine before, they are actively printing things on their in-house 3D printers to kind of show you what it is. Really cool. So yeah. lots of uh, crazy colored uh, dragons, and they had a uh, 20-sided die, a D20. You know, I use the proper name here, and other cool stuff like that. Yeah, that, it was really neat. I didn't realize how much they had expanded that section. They had a whole maker section uh, that in STEM. That was the other thing. So if you're really yep. into Had some science. Uh, kids' uh, science yeah. project uh, boxes and stuff, yeah. There were some really good ones. The kits they had, like if you want to build a ham radio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was really neat. It kind of reminds me. oscilloscopes and all kinds of Do stuff. you remember Radio Shack from back yes. in the day? Oh, yeah. Radio Shack used to have really cool STEM stuff where if you wanted to build a radio, if you wanted to, you know, you could do wiring. It taught you how to do breadboards with soldering. They had all of that there, which I think is kind of cool. You could build your own telescope. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Really cool. So I saw some neat stuff today that, uh, you know. It's a had... really cool store. And, uh, you know, I worry. Uh, I'm kind of getting sentimental here. We worry about physical video game media and stuff going out of stores. I worry about this stuff going out of stores. But I think there's enough, uh, uh, like, the STEM push by big YouTubers like Mark Rober. I really like him. Mm -hmm. And others like that to get kids into science, technology, engineering, mathematics. There we go. So the STEM project. So that's right. I, th I think that's an excellent point. And I'm with you. I also was, they had a, a section in the middle of the store, which was all Apple products. They had IMAX. They had the i or the, the Mac Mini, the Mac mm -hmm. Studio. Yep. Every iPad you can imagine. I didn't Those iPad realize. iPad Pros are looking pretty good. Dude I, dude, I didn't realize they had so much Mac stuff. And Yeah, they're an authorized yeah. Uh, reseller, I, yeah. Think, I believe. Yeah, exactly. So if you wanted to like get hands-on, which that's the downside of Amazon, is that was my issue with the chair. I couldn't find one that I'd like because I couldn't sit in one. Yeah. And uh, we did say this on the way back. One critique we'd have, they, they should at a minimum, for one of every chair they had, they should have it built and at least in the back. They shouldn't have had to have gone and gotten the manager's chair. Oh, I agree. Yeah. You you know, you have a big warehouse and uh, space is precious. You know, I've worked at I Walmart and other places, but uh, at least have something because you're going to make a sale. Um, well, they did today because uh, they yeah, let me absolutely. sit in them. Yeah. yeah. I so was that's a walk. perfect example of uh, 
you may not have room on the floor, but at least have it somewhere to drag it out and try it out. Well, and that's the unique thing. There's certain things like shoes. You can buy shoes on Amazon, but you're going to try them on. If they don't fit, you got to send the dumb thing back. There are just yeah. certain things that are good for brick and mortar stores that need to hang yeah. around. I think furniture is one of them. I, I, you know, and don't get me wrong. I, I, I bought chairs on Amazon before. It's a gamble. It's a dice throw. There's certain things you just got to touch and feel. And I'm going to go one step further. If you're not building a PC and you want to buy one outright and you want to feel it, you want to see it, going to be able to put your hands on that there because they had tons of PCs, all in ones, Chromebooks, gaming laptops. We did see the A Rock laptop with that thing was wild. It was weird. I don't know if I can find that. Yeah, if you want to look for that, that, to kind of explain it, you have your regular laptop screen, but then right above your keyboard, you know, kind of where that connection is, you have a second screen. I found it. Um, Here it is. I'm going to share it. I'll let you get this picture up. But uh, for those listening, I think it would be cool if you're doing uh, D&D or some kind of game where you could put some strategy guide on that little screen. It's just a wild device, but it, its price point is like four grand. It's not oh, cheap. It was so expensive. We we were looking at it. And we we're trying to figure it out. So if you're not if you're on audio only, there is a a normal laptop screen at the top, and then there's a keyboard at the bottom, and then there's another like narrow screen right below that. Mm-hmm. And you could drag between windows, so it's like a second screen. I was trying to think when we were there, looking like what. Well, like you said, what's the true function of this? Because it's not big yeah. enough to put like another spreadsheet on. Now, it the other good, thing, but... thinking about uh, our Elgato stuff, we have Elgato mics and stuff. They have a teleprompter. That might be good if you're doing uh, some yep. web-based uh, presenting. That might that be little good. screen could be good for your teleprompting. Now, I'm going to say this. Just kind of thinking out loud. I'm gonna. I'm on the Best Buy page here, so they have Uh-oh. like you know. Don't tell Micro Center. Kinds. I know, but but what I will say is this, and I'm, I'm not trying to throw some shade here. Maybe a little bit. This had a. This is a laptop. Had a AMD Ryzen processor in it. It did have an NVIDIA GeForce. I'm trying to see what the video card is. Yeah, it's a 4080. Okay, which is crazy. So this thing here, here's the spec. It's an AMD Ryzen nine. That's the fastest you can get in a laptop. Thirty two gigs of RAM. I mean, this thing here, Best Buy, is thirty two hundred dollars. Uh, an RTX forty eighty. That's better than what I have in my desktop. A oh, one yeah. terabyte SSD. This thing is a beast, right? But when Doug and I were messing with it, I noticed I clicked and I dragged uh, the window down from the top screen to the bottom. It was stuttering, like it was struggling. Hopefully that's just the display model and Maybe. people have messed it up over time. But yeah, you're giving the benefit of the doubt. This was <laughs> I terrible. I was like dragging it. It was like one well, screen slow. looked terrible. I thought when you drug it, it very from bright, the high yeah. def down there, it looked like a potato is what I it like was, to call it. So. It was dull. He's right. Yeah. So, but, but here's our point. Here's our point. This was cool. We got to get our hands on it. Yeah. What if? You thought this looked awesome. You saw this Best Buy thing. You didn't get your hands on it, and you ordered it from Amazon. And it arrived, yeah. and you're like, eh, this is yeah, the point. Yeah. yeah, This is what I think Doug was trying to point out, is like having stores like this, being able to put hands on, it's really important for certain products. And this is a great example of that. Well, and that reminds me, your son was uh, shopping for a mouse, mm-hmm. and a uh, guy brought a open mouse from the back and let him try it out. He did. So, uh, really yeah. good customer service at Microsoft. There. That's actually a good point because they had mice spread out to where you could put your hands on them. And that was his Gabriel saying. He was just like, I want to feel it. You know, yeah. I want to feel it. And the one that, he, and it wasn't the only one. They had tons of them that weren't out on display. And mm-hmm. he asked the guy, he's like, hey, can you go grab one and open it for me? Yeah. And the guy was like, okay, sure. And he did. And guess what? They made, made a sale. He made yeah. a sale. Yep. So that's our lessons we learned today. Good customer service. Exactly. All right, Doug. I think we're going to bring it on home, man. This was this was fun. I had a great day with you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. For going uh, with me. Bringing it home. You know, I appreciate everybody listening to us. Uh, like, subscribe. We're going to continue to try and keep bringing you really good content. There's a lot of stuff in the tech world, AI, movies, nerd culture that we're going to continue bringing. I uh, really appreciate everybody listening. Uh, check out our store. You know, it's a little warm out there, but we got some baseball tees and some other stuff. Uh, as they say, winter is coming. You know, we got some uh, sweatshirts and hoodies and 
all kinds of uh, coffee gear. So I love it. check it out. Oh, and I uh, even for my little like pop socket here. So oh yeah, oh, I can't see wired nerdy, wired, uh, pop, nerdy socket. pop socket. Look at that, yeah. always representing. So, all right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. As Doug said, we will see you next week. That does it for episode number seventeen. You all take care. Have a good day. See ya. <laughs>